Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Not a very good bell, but that's my bell I have to use for today. I want to start our meeting, officially start our meeting. Welcome, everybody. We have a small crowd with us this evening, but I'm sure we're going to enjoy it because of our guest speaker. Welcome to our meeting of the St. Petersburg International Rotary Club. We are a very small club. Everybody on the screen here, I think, already knows us. Everybody except for probably David and his two colleagues already knows us. We will continue to try to grow this fall when things get a little bit more settled there in St. Petersburg. Things are still a little bit bad, not only there, but here. here. Oh, now I have a echo. Somebody gave me an echo there. We need just to be careful everywhere we go. So welcome this evening, glad to see you. And we need to go through of just a few protocols. But let me run through those quickly and then we'll get, get through this. First of all, our club, our club and the Rotary mission statement. In our mission statement, we want to make sure that people understand that we're here to promote integrity and advance the world understanding and goodwill through peace, not only in business, but in our personal relationships and in the communities in which we live. Rotary has been doing this very well for many, many years and I'm sure it's going to continue in the future. We have some meeting protocols. We would ask you, please leave your microphone off or muted, leave it muted until you're called upon to speak or if you wanna speak up about something in particular, but please leave it uh, muted while other people are speaking. Please leave your camera turned on so we can see your smiling face, see who you are. We wanna see you in a full large panorama, not just small. And talking about the panorama, when people are speaking in the upper right hand corner, if you'll click the speaker view, you will be able to see that one individual who is speaking and not the whole gallery. And sometimes it's better to see that person while they're speaking, just like what David's going to be speaking today. Other times you might want to go to gallery, but the speaker view, in my, my opinion, is the best. We ask you, please don't talk about sex, religion, or politics. We know these three things are going to creep into our conversations. They always do. But when they do, don't point them at any, of it, any particular individual or organization. Just keep them in generalities or don't use them at all. And the reason we ask you to do that is because our meetings are recorded. We record our meetings each week we meet, and you may say something that you did not want recorded. So I'm just warning you ahead of time, it is a recorded meeting. So just be a little bit careful about what you have to say. If you do those things, everything is going to be fine and our meeting will go very well. And now I need to move on to my president's, com president's comments. I am a little bit concerned, and I'm sure many of you are concerned. We have no clue what's going to be happening in the next three or four months as we go into this winter, with this crazy pandemic we have. People thought it was going away. People thought it was getting less. And in some parts of the world, it is. I am talking to you tonight from Florida in the United States. And I can tell you that in the last week, we've had more cases in one week than we've ever had in the last 16 months, the highest amount ever we've had here. So it has spiked and going up, still climbing today. I don't know how it is in your area, but I would like to warn you, please be safe. You're all precious to us. We know you as friends. We know you as Rotarians. We want you to live a long time and live a good life, not be in the hospital with tubes sticking in you. So we want, we just encourage you, please be safe. Just, and your, your method of safe is whatever you decide. Whatever is good to you, that's your own decision, but please be safe and take care of yourself. And then the other thing I would offer as Rotarians, we need to look around to our fellow Rotarians. Do you know a fellow Rotarian who maybe is a little bit sick, not necessarily from COVID, but from anything? Somebody who's having a difficult time. Maybe their business has gone down because of the virus. Maybe someone in their family has gotten sick. Reach out to them, offer them a little bit of empathy, try to understand their situation, and try to help them out any way you can. As Rotarians, we're in a global community. And in that global community, we have responsibility of helping people around the world whenever we see they are in need. So please, if you're not uh, sick or having any problems, you're feeling very, very well, 
doesn't mean all the people around you and in your neighborhood are. Check them out. See if you can help them. See if you can give them a little bit of aid. Or maybe it's just comforting. Maybe somebody just needs to have a cup of coffee and unload their thoughts on you. You sit back, drink your coffee, and just listen to them. That's fine, too. But sometimes that's all people really need to feel better. So just think about your neighbors. Think about your fellow libertarians. And certainly take care of yourself. Those are my president's opening comments. And I'd like to pass it over to Randall to see if he has any comments for us as a secretary. Randall, the screen is yours. Yes, so I would like to thank uh, today Boris Vitkowski from the Truman Chamber of Commerce for allowing us to have our meeting in his uh, very nicely appointed uh, office that has a small conference room that can seat four to six people with uh, a coffee machine, actually multiple coffee machines uh, down, the, down the hallway with cookies, but no chocolates. No chocolates. <laughs> So Boris was uh, introduced to us by our uh, treasurer, Andreas Berna. Andreas is still away on holiday, as you mentioned. Hopefully he'll be back pretty soon. Uh, but Boris has invited a guest today, is Alex. And Alex, can you explain uh, who you are? Yeah, hello, uh, I'm Alex Mihailo. I'm living in San Petersburg, and uh, currently uh, I am, uh, yeah, I would say, the businessman, the free businessman on the market. And uh, Boris uh, invited me two days ago for this event, and uh, I would like to join and to hear more about the Rotary Club and what is it, because it was uh, very new for me. Where, where are you from? Uh, St. Petersburg. Oh, St. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Russian citizen. Is this your first time to visit the Rotary Club meeting? Yes, okay. but not the first time for a, a, a HK, for a uh, hundred Okay, well, we will, we will distribute propaganda to you later and explain it more. <laughs> All of the people on the screen are Rotarians. Uh, many of them are very senior past leaders of Rotary clubs and Rotary districts from around the world. And uh, it all starts from the first meeting. So welcome. Okay. And uh, Michael, the second thing I would add is that uh, now that the holidays are basically have come to an end for all of us, except for Andreas, we will be uh, reverting to weekly meetings starting today. Okay. Well, again, you know, Randall, you are our um, sort of eyes and ears out there for our club. Now, the fact that you keep track of so many people who have come to our meetings, we have over 300 people who are on our mailing list. And we normally get 30 or 40 participants here in our weekly meetings. So Randall's the person who's keeping in contact with all of you folks. And uh, we want to make sure we keep that contact and encourage you to come back because we will later today be talking about our lineup of speakers that we have for this coming fall. And I'm pretty excited about it because I think there's some folks on there that have really got some interesting things to say, especially as we're trying to grow the ICCs with Russia to get that, that cooperation between them. So uh, I think things are going in the right direction. Randall, any other comments before we move on? No. Well, that was a short answer. I expected more out of you than that. Oh, okay. Short on words today. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our guest speaker this evening. Now, I'm not quite sure, but I can pretty much guess that this young man has a sweet tooth. Um, if he doesn't have a sweet tooth, he certainly should have a sweet tooth. Oh, I forgot something. Didn't I? I'll get you at the end. I'll catch you at the end. I, I skipped something. My mistake. We'll go ahead and move right on into our speaker. Tonight, we're going to hear from Dave Munger. Now, I think Dave has got a sweet tooth. I think that he's got a craving that he's been able to turn into a business and be successful. I've never met him, but if I was in his shoes, I know that I would uh, <clears throat> be eating just a little bit of chocolate, probably more than I should. He came to Russia when he was just 22 years old in 1998. And after he had been there for a while, he had joined up with, I believe the name here is Andre Korpinov. And they started making chocolates. It became very, very successful because of Dave's endeavor to learn the chocolate industry, diving into how to make it the best, to make it world-class. 
He even went to France and studied for a period of time to bring the ideas back to Russia. They did so well that after a period of time, in 2006, Wrigley's decided to buy the 80% stock in the company. So it was a huge boost for them. Dave went on and worked for a few different people, some confectioners and some other folks in Russia. And eventually he decided in 2015, he wanted to start his own chocolate company and he called it Munger Chocolatier. Now, at the beginning, I don't know if he's struggling or not, but he's starting to make that turn in the right direction now. He's actually shipping chocolates to China, to other countries, and even a large shipment just recently to the United States. Now, Dave is a person who is, can't sit still in my opinion. I've talked to a lot of different leaders, although I've never talked to Dave one-on-one, -on -one, but I've seen his type. And some of these folks just cannot sit still. And I think Dave is one of those kind. He sees an opportunity, he knows he has a passion for something and he goes forward to get it. So that makes him a good businessman that would also make him a very good Rotarian. Because as we know with our projects, once we get started on them, we wanna see them to completion and help other people. So I don't wanna steal any more of David's thunder, David, would you like to come on screen and maybe share your screen with us and tell us a little bit about your company for about, oh, about 35, 40 minutes, and then we'll open it to questions and answers. Okay. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, calling you from Kaliningrad. It's a small Russian enclave on the Baltic Sea. Uh, my factory is closed from here. Uh, now it's here, it's uh, six o'clock in the evening, so I'm already at home. Uh, for the presentation, I'll use uh, the, the presentation of our company. I'll put it on the screen. So, uh, yeah, I'm in Russia since uh, 98. It was a very tough time when I arrived in Russia first time. It was the uh, default time where the, the Russian rubbers uh, dropped from 6 to 24. Uh, most of foreigners go away from Russia at that time, but I just arrived to study. Uh, I was at that time student of uh, theology, and I specialized in Russia in uh, Byzantine patrology. Uh, it is the study of the, the text of the uh, father of the church. Uh, it was uh, not something I was studying for making a profession out of it, because I don't think religion should become a source of income. Uh, I studied for myself, but uh, after that, I came back to, to Canada and I began to propose to Canadian uh, company help them to, to find a uh, market in, in Russia. And when I was in Russia, I made the same for, for a Russian company to Canada. And uh, with time, I met my, my future wife and she, uh, she wanted me to find something steady in Russia. She don't want me to, to go to, to Canada all the time. So uh, I began to, <coughs> to look for something steady. And I met with uh, Andrei Korkunov, that at that time was not producing chocolate. He was just having a plan to, to do. Sorry. And uh, <coughs> yeah. I, I'm not uh, sick with COVID, but I'm uh, some cold. <coughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, his plan was to, uh, to, to produce chocolate, but uh, he, he was not uh, intended to, to make uh, everything from the beginning. He was intended to buy filling and chocolate <coughs> separately and uh, uh, integrating it. And uh, he asked me to find I proposed him my conception of development and uh, he was very interested. Uh, he asked me to find uh, ready filling in, in Europe. Uh, we go to France with him. He said it was very nice, very interesting, <coughs> but uh, too, too expensive for Russia. And uh, he proposed me to learn this profession from, from scratch with the best uh, chocolate in the world and to, to, to start it, the company from the beginning. And uh, this is what we done. We found uh, Monsieur Jean-Dominique Joly in the Alps, in French, in France, and I, I learned to, to do chocolate. Uh, we made something very good, very good product. And uh, in 2005, uh, we won the first 
place in the world in Louvre in France as the the best uh, end crafter for for chocolate best chocolate in the world and uh, the company become very 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 uh, successful in Russia it was uh, the leader in the premium market it was sold to Rigling in 2006 and uh, I became kind of a local uh, food stars in, in Russia. Uh, I began to work for a different company. Next job was for a company Vimbildan, that is actually the uh, leader in Eastern Europe for dairy product. And uh, after that, I worked for company KDV, uh, that is uh, mainly making uh, more cheap confectionery and snack but uh, he's the absolute leader here with uh, about 10 million uh, euro turnover. And I work for both company as director of development till 2015. But uh, my, my dream was to make uh, a good product I would be proud of. My, my father is a famous uh, Interesting. We lost the volume. Uh, chief in, in Canada, just to, to to earn money, but make my own company. Yeah. Question. Okay. Yeah, I decided to start my own company in 2015. Uh, you have a small idea of the the product we are doing on the screen. Uh, I try to. Okay. This is uh, this is me. This is the small story I made. Uh, I told you. Well, what we are doing actually, I am, I am, for myself, I, I would prefer to have uh, healthy food. I'm vegetarian. I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm not eating sugar. But sometimes you need to make yourself a treat. You don't need for that uh, two kilo of chocolate each time. The philosophy of the company is to make very, very quality product uh, affordable for Russian consumers. So we are working uh, at the difference of most uh, end crafter with a very low uh, margin level, but we are trying to make the product affordable for, for everybody. So uh, you, you don't need to buy uh, expensive chocolate every day, but uh, if uh, you buy it, then it may be only uh, 50 grams, uh, eight chocolates, but uh, it's affordable. Uh, dollars on Russian market, it's not too expensive, but uh, it can be easily compared to the the best uh, end makers in, in the world, best chocolate. Uh, I go a little bit further. Yeah, the idea of the company. I'll send. I'll show you some uh, some of the box. Yeah, this is uh, our truffles. Uh, President Putin gave our chocolate to the Prime Minister of Japan. Uh, the idea is that our product is completely natural. Uh, there is no uh, conservative on it. On the, the packaging, you see that there is uh, inside uh, bio chocolate, fresh cream and cognac, nothing else. Uh, mainly, I believe that the best recipe was uh, invented 200 years ago by our grand grandmothers. And uh, they don't need to be modified, but sometimes the packaging need to be modified to uh, reach the um, the shelf life that the retail needs for. Uh, this box is a good illustration of that. So if you open it, the box itself is a thermos that keep the temperature inside cold and uh, it's sealed with metal. Inside when we open it, yeah, uh, it's, uh, we have a special bag inside with uh, iron powder that killed the rest of oxygen inside of the packaging. And uh, now I'll open the box. It looks like uh, like you have on the big picture. Yeah. Okay. Dave, so, uh, Dave, we, Dave, we cannot see you opening a box or anything. So um, I don't know what you're doing there, but we cannot see that. We only see yeah, the yeah, picture on the side. I'll show you, yeah, now here. This is the truffle you see. Ah, you don't see me. No. Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I thought that uh, you see the same uh, picture. Okay, so yeah, I'm opening uh, the box. Uh, I come back to the, the main screen to, yeah. 
So yeah, we, we opened the box. I showed that the, it seals with metals with uh, iron powder inside to avoid conservatives. And uh, the box itself is, uh, is a thermos to keep it cold. So uh, the, the box itself uh, and the technology we use for different chocolate uh, help to avoid using conservative and have a very, very pure product. So if you look at what are doing the, the best uh, chocolate in the world, they have product with a very high humidity contains, very, very short life, shelf life. Uh, we have the same product, but with longer shelf life due to the technology we are using. Uh, I'll come back to the um, to the presentation. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you look at the uh, yeah, this is our orange peels and uh, ginger. Uh, from 2019, we are the official supplier to to Moscow Kremlins. Uh, for the Asian re market in Japan and China, this is something they are looking at uh, as something good because uh, they are probably less mind about uh, democracy. They are thinking about uh, that this is a sign of, of quality. Uh, they, they, they don't see exactly the same. So this is not something we are talking about if we're going to go on the American market, but uh, for, for Asia, it's, it's good. Yeah, so uh, this picture show what uh, what a ganache is. A ganache is uh, what chocolate we're making 200 years ago. It's made from product that you have on the farm. It's uh, fresh cream chocolate uh, alcohol. Alcohol is uh, as a conservative and a source of uh, natural aroma. Uh, you don't have that much, but enough to have normal shelf life. Uh, here on those chocolate, we have it on uh, some of the box here too. Um, this is one of our uh, seven uh, industrial patents for, for production. Uh, we are making the first chocolate in the world that is waterproof. Uh, this is waterproof because we are first uh, injecting uh, pure alcohol in the chocolate mass uh, that is uh, binding the, uh, the dry part of the chocolate and allowing to crunch the, the chocolate, uh, taking out the, uh, the free acid uh, part uh, without adding sugar in the mass. So in this mass, we have 0% sugar in the, in the, the shell itself. Uh, the shell is the thinnest in the world, it's 0.3 millimeter, it's like, it's like paper. But uh, if you're looking at standard chocolate with um, moisture filling with alcohol, usually it's very thick, and uh, it's falling inside because you have uh, evaporation of the, the water contains. On this chocolate, the, the chocolate, because of physical process, it, it can be a little bit complicated. And uh, if we would have two hours to speak about that, I would show you the process in the, the factory. Uh, but it's nothing chemical inside, it's purely a uh, um, physical process. And uh, there is no sugar that allow the, the migration of water. But uh, the shell is very, very thin, like paper, and it's always cracking. It's not, uh, it's not um, becoming soft as standard chocolate with, with water inside. Uh, this is something unique to our company. And I think there is a lot of uh, good manufacturing chocolate, of chocolate in the world. Uh, but they don't all have potential to export because the, they are making something that you have on uh, in each of the country this is something very unique we're exporting actually to japan to china to usa and i think the company will withdraw uh, even more with time uh, this is part of the the product we have here and uh, this is all very uh, affordable i think it's important because i uh, yeah, the product is looking very luxury, but uh, it should be affordable to, uh, to the people, I believe. Uh, this is some small, of, uh, some small packaging we are making for airplane company. Uh, this is the box I showed you a little bit earlier. And uh, this is our tablets. Uh, it's have a little bit specific forms. Uh, if you're looking at it, it's, here it's uh, 50 grams, it's 24 small pieces of 2 grams, uh, 0.08 each. Uh, 
the idea is that uh, chocolate is a product without water contains, so it have no aroma. But when you uh, are eating chocolate, you are putting it in your mouth and it begins to solve in the saliva and you begin to feel the aroma. And the thinnest it is, the, the more you feel the aroma, the less you feel it as uh, fatty or sweet. So uh, this form is the, the thinnest possible that physics allowed for, for chocolate. And uh, it's very a uh, format of tablets, not for uh, eating, but for sharing a moment. Uh, people in Russia like to, uh, at post time, to, to drink tea, coffee, and um, sharing some good moments talking. And uh, here it's more a format of chocolate to, to share a good moment. And uh, the taste we have uh, are, here you have a small part of them. Uh, now we are making more and more with the uh, herbs of the Altai regions. Uh, for most people, chocolate is not an healthy product. Uh, as I told you before, I was two years the director for uh, research and development for a very big dairy company in Russia. And uh, dairy producers are always uh, making the accent that their product is good for health. But uh, if you are going deeper, uh, there's a lot of probiotic in uh, yogurt and other dairy products. But those probiotic uh, are first going, first going to the stomach where they are uh, consumed by acids. And uh, if you are uh, drinking tea or very useful herbs for health, uh, you first put uh, hot water on that. So you are killing a big part of the, the good part of, of it. And then you drink the, the tea, but you can absorb only the part that is uh, water dissolved, that, that, that can be uh, solubly in, in water. Sorry for my, for my English. And uh, after that, you want it to be absorbed uh, by your body, but uh, it's killed by the acid uh, part in the stomachs. So when you are putting it in chocolate, we are using, we are taking the herbs, uh, we are drying it. So uh, there is no um, thermic process, 200 degree, like when you are preparing tea, it's prepared only at 35 degree. And uh, you are eating all the herbs, not only the soluble parts. And uh, when it comes uh, inside of the, the body, uh, it is encapsulated in the, the cacao butter because it's in chocolate. And uh, it uh, can be fully absorbed by, uh, by, by the person. So actually we are promoting uh, tablets of chocolate that are uh, made from different herbs, but uh, are very useful for for the art. Uh, yeah, this is our packaging. This is other product we are making from uh, honey from Altai region uh, with very, very thin filling inside. Uh, this is a product that is quite popular in Japan now. Uh, this is our chocolate petals. Uh, so in Russian, it's with uh, Lepiski chocolate, Lepiski is uh, petals. Yeah, so this is uh, more. This is everything we, we had actually. Actually, we are focusing more of all on uh, the truffles and, uh, and the ganache. Uh, I'll stop the, the presentation. I'll show you some of the, the product. OK. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is the ganache I told you about. OK. There. Oh, it's working? Yes. OK. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, our ganache. And uh, yeah, it's a product actually I'm very, very proud of. Uh, I'll open it. So uh, yeah, here you have to eat it with a special uh, pick. I don't know if the, the camera allow it to, to see it. So uh, yeah, it's very, very, very thin shell. It's really a product that is unique in the world. Uh, you have 26% humidity inside if you go on, uh, on in your country and uh, you go to the market, you have a lot of chocolate manufacturer. Uh, some are very expensive, some are very cheap. Uh, you look at the ingredient behind of the box and uh, some are 
better, you have pure cacao butter and all the stuff. Other have uh, palm oil, but everything they have in common that uh, it's all anhydric product. Uh, they all have no other contents. Uh, this is what made our product very unique that it have a very high water contains, but good shelf life due to the, the sealing, the production of the, the chocolate shell. And uh, when we are shipping it to export, uh, it's depreased and the exporter are uh, putting the, the date from the defrosting date. But it's a uh, emulsion of water in fat, so it's not uh, it's not breaking the texture uh, when it's uh, it's frozen, so it's keep uh, it's keep the same. If you are looking at the the truffle, it have this shape. It's not a, it's not a, a ball. Actually, uh, the history of the truffles is very old. It's a product that uh, have about one hundred and fifty years. Uh, one chocolate arrived in France. Uh, it was a very simple production. People were making uh, recipes from the product they had on the farms. So uh, they take a ball, they use chocolate, uh, cream, honey if they want it sweeter, alcohol if they want to have some aroma, and they mix it together. And uh, it gave some kind of mayonnaise looking like uh, with the, the, the taste and color of chocolate. They name it ganache. And uh, they wanted to make a, a switch from all of that. And uh, so they just take a spoon and uh, within their palm, they make a ball. Uh, it was very simple technology, uh, but not very uh, clean from the microbiological point of view. And it was drying very fast. So they took, they, they, they take those, uh, those chocolate balls of ganache and they put it back in chocolate and uh, they take it out from the chocolate with their hand and uh, put it on the table. So uh, chocolate was not tempered. They had no idea about chocolate tempering. Uh, it became very all white and not beautiful to, to eat. Uh, so they decided to push it with the forks and cacao powder. And uh, it, it take the look of uh, what everybody knows as truffles. But when that product arrived to Japan, uh, when the Japanese heard about the history of how, how truffle are made, uh, they, they like, uh, they, for them, the, the, how to say it in English, uh, they, they, they need the clean process. They, they don't like the idea that the product from, from fresh cream was made this way. So uh, it's a product that is made completely in a closed room with a special circulation of air on a film that are uh, specially treated with, uh, with alcohol. And uh, it's completely handmade, but nobody touch it with their hand. And you don't have the, the shell of chocolate around because usually when you have the, the shell, uh, the, the, the humidity from the product is beginning to, uh, to, to disappear, to evaporate. Uh, you begin, you, you see a gap between chocolate and the shell and uh, in this gap, you have moisture development and other product, uh, other problems with microbiology. So this product is just a feeling. It's more pleasant to, to eat. Uh, it's very, very soft. And uh, we had a couple of years ago, um, a, a tender with a, a Japanese company for the birthday of the uh, Japanese Imperator. The Japanese company proposed uh, the same product but uh, with French cognac, we made that product with, with Japanese whiskey and uh, we, we got the, the, the business <laughs> in that. Um, so actually, uh, our company is still, uh, is still very small. It's not as big as I would like to because uh, I, uh, it's a little bit difficult actually in Russia with the, the bank systems to get more uh, finance. Uh, I start my company with um, the, the salary I made as an employee uh, 15 years in Russia, but uh, we are growing uh, actually 100% of the company is belonging to me. Uh, of course, as, uh, as every entrepreneur, I would like it to go faster, uh, but uh, I'm happy that at least I'm doing 
what I like. Uh, I'm very proud of. Uh, it's actually it's a it's a small company. It's beautiful. I would like to to develop it uh, as long as possible. Uh, I name it by my family name, Manger. Uh, actually, uh, it was not the the aim at the beginning, but uh, it's very difficult to find a, a name that is not patented in in Russia. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a product that I'm I'm proud of. Maybe you have some question. Yes, thank you, David. Thank you. Unfortunately, we missed seeing you most of the time because most of the time your screen was blank uh, as it is now. Um, I can't see you. I don't know if anyone else can, but you have a blank screen where you are. Um, one of the questions that I had that popped in my head was when you were showing your boxes of chocolates, several of the boxes had small wooden devices inside. Are those some kind of pick for picking out the chocolate out of the box or what are those for? Uh, can you repeat, please? I didn't understand that the last part. Several of your pictures that you showed of your boxes of chocolate. Inside the box, there were some small, looked like wooden, I don't know, but small devices inside the box. Were those for picking the chocolate out of the box? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's uh, inside the cavity, the, the chocolate, Actually, uh, all the chocolate we have, they, they are open. So uh, uh, actually, when you uh, when you eat the chocolate, uh, the filling that we are making the ganache it contains a lot of humidity, and this is the the nice part. Yeah, it's uh, have much more aroma. It's much more soft, and um, for for the consumer, the chocolate uh, is. Um, something very nice but for a technician chocolate is a, a fat layer for production of the, the filling yeah and uh, here the, the aim was to have the the more the biggest quantity of filling as possible so um, the product is open it cannot be touched by hand because it's too soft uh, the shell is so thin that if you take it you broke it uh it's part of the finest stuff uh, of the chocolate but uh it keep your hand cleaned and uh, it's a nice way to to eat it okay very good good uh, richard did you have a question no no oh i thought i saw you raise your hand i'm sorry okay no, anybody no, else I can, anthony i can i can, I can see anthony, anthony antonina go ahead Oi. I'm so impressed. Mm -hmm. I'm almost jumping in my chair here. <laughs> okay. First of all, Dave, your English is very good English for Canada. I'm, 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 my French language is French. Uh, first language is French, so it's. Yes. French okay. French. And I'm talking to you from Canada. Okay. <laughs> Second, you mentioned number of times that your chocolates have all natural and unique ingredients mm -hmm. right yeah wonderful uh, back in 2001 i was head of r and d and quality control in canadian organic sprout company mm -hmm. uh, by a professional background I'm a microbiologist. Mm -hmm. So we developed uh, a unique product called sprouted flux powder. Mm -hmm. When uh, flux seed is bioactivated for 36 hours, then dried and powdered. Mm -hmm. So it became to be a uh, enriched with enzymes, vitamins, stabilized, and enriched with microorganisms, mm -hmm. which, by my opinion, are probiotics. So cut story short, the only uh, companies are producing this product for whole world at the moment are in Canada, in my retirement at the market, in Belleville Farmers Market, I sell probiotic chocolates. 
chocolates that contain one day probiotic formula for people. And, uh, and this is just amazing when you are mentioning encapsulation, et cetera, you know, for uh, micro microbes to go through intestine of uh, human um, intestine, okay? So um, anyways, if you would like to talk about um, a possibility creating healthy chocolate line, please, I have all my credentials in the chat. You can find me through uh, um, Randall or other Rotarians. And um, I'm speaking now from Canada. I speak Russian as well and have relatives in St. Petersburg in Russia. So moreover, uh, I came later because I was in uh, inter-country committee, Canada, Russia, Rotary meeting before. We started one hour before our meeting with St. Petersburg. And uh, I would invite you to be our speaker sometimes in an uh, inter-country committee, Rotary committee, uh, Canada, Russia. Basically, that's it. Yeah, I would be very happy to learn more. Uh, I think it will be e easier to the contact uh, through Randall after that. Uh, actually, if I knew that it's an interesting topic uh, for you or for others, uh, I can take uh, I can talk very long time about uh, about that, and I think it's very. Me too. <laughs> I think it's very trendy through all the world, uh, in China and everywhere, to make uh, healthy products. And people want to, to know that it's healthy. And um, it's something that can be explained. And I think that uh, the, the, the development of the, the new marketing with internet, with Instagram and all of that, allowed to communicate it much better than it was uh, before, for, uh, with lowest budget, but to, to reach the consumer. Uh, we were uh, one month ago in the region of Altai. We made a lot of video to explain to the consumer why uh, they, they, uh, they should believe that chocolate is better for health than yogurt. <laughs> but uh, not, not so easy, but I think we will reach our goal. Sprouted flux, sprouted flux chocolate definitely is better than yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. A little bit technical there, but for all of us, we're interested in hearing how people are trying to make things better for our life, which is good. Randall, you had your hand up, you had a question. I have two questions. Now, first question uh, for you, Dave, is why Canadian bread? What, what? Why, why, are, why did you base your company, your, your manufacturing company? Yeah. yeah, okay, uh, good question. First of all, I start my company in Moscow. In Moscow region, and uh, uh, as I told you, I'm not a rich entrepreneur. Uh, I'm uh, for for one of the line we had. I had an agreement with uh, the manufacturer of the equipment from Denmark uh, that I knew for a very very long time that they supply us the equipment, but we are paying it one year after. Uh, it was very nice, but uh, if you are importing equipment to Russia, you have to pay the uh, uh, tax on added value and uh, other tax on the product. So it's 30%. And uh, Kaliningrad is a free tax zone in Russia. It's separated from, from Russia. It's on the Baltic, just between Lithuania and Poland. Uh, but there is many advantage that you are not paying any tax on equipment, you are not paying tax on ingredients when they are coming in, in the, the region. Uh, you are paying uh, you are paying the salary to the employee, but you have less charge, part of the charge are paid by the states. And uh, we are six years without, without tax on the revenue. 
And next six years after that are only 50% of the charge that will be effective in Russia at that moment. So uh, for the for my company, it was uh, easier for the, the start. So we move in Saint Petersburg in Kaliningrad. It made the business a little bit more complicated for sales to Russia because it's far. It's uh, 1,400 kilometers from Moscow. But for export, it's very good because it's allow us to uh, to save a lot and make the company more effective. Good, Brenda. What's your second question? Second question. Michael said I cannot talk about sex, but I, I want to ask: Is chocolate an aphrodisiac? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very good aphrodisiac. I'll tell you, uh, this is uh, ginger. And uh, our ginger is very special. Most ginger and chocolate are very dry. Uh, our ginger are very, very soft. It's made from uh, ginger from Guilin region that is usually for, for sushi. Uh, for our packaging of uh, orange and uh, ginger, we have a special uh, pattern too. It's super legit. So yeah, so now I open the, the box and uh, inside the product is not calibrated. So uh, it has different shape. Uh, it's important to keep the chocolate not broken inside. So uh, the thickness of the product is a little bit uh, uh, inside of the box, you have hard uh, carton and soft. So I'll open it. Yeah, you have uh, yeah. this hard carton and soft board. Yeah, David, David, we cannot see you. Your your picture is frozen, so we can't see what you're doing. So. I'll try to close it and. <laughs> okay. If if we add uh, Antonina's flax seeds, can we? supercharge the chocolate to make it even more aphrodisiacal. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice word. Then, nice word, Randall. Nice word. I have time, I think, to do some R and D. So this is uh, okay. Yeah. And when we we first start to make uh, this product, uh, I presented at uh, in Moscow. It was a uh, um, an, an evening uh, for uh, cigar smokers. And uh, mm -hmm. I began to talk about the, the ginger, and I told that it's very good aphrodisiac. Uh, it helped for, uh, for uh, uh, no, to keep it healthy for the men. <laughs> I don't know the, the word in English. And uh, all the, the smokers were mainly men, but all their wives came to me to buy the, the product for home. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, it's very effective. <laughs> very good, very good combination cigars, wine, and chocolate. <laughs> okay, R R Rami, you got your hand up. You have a question, Rami. Uh, N Natalia, yeah. you're next. Yeah. So, yes, go ahead, you. Rami. Uh, so, um, uh, I want to say that I've tried these chocolates. A client, high net worth individual, came from Russia and brought, brought for us 10 of these. I ate three boxes in one hour, two hours. It's crazy good. I believe in your product. Thanks. This is some great stuff. So, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, so you, your goal right now is to grow your company, right? So you wanna grow it in terms of sales and you wanna grow it in terms of financing. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is in terms of sales now and Russian market, okay? How is your attitude towards online markets? Yeah, there are these websites, Ozone, Wildberries, and I don't know what all of these, how's your attitude toward that in general? and traders in Russia. I've seen your product sold in Damadeva airport, and I've seen it in um, across some alcohol stores, but it's not like all over the place. And the second thing is the cash injection to your, your company. So are you looking for some bank to give you a loan or are you looking for an investor to uh, share the equity with you? So these are the questions. Okay, back to you, Dave. Yeah, actually, um... Yeah, it's a very important question about the, the development of the retail sales. Uh, as I told you, when Kopkuna started in 98, uh, the, the king of the market was uh, the one that had the best agreement with the distributors. 
Uh, nowadays, distributors are not a factor in uh, in retails. Nobody know them, need them. There is a big chains uh, that you are delivering it straight to them, but uh, chains are uh, killing the manufacturers. Uh, actually, especially in Russia, there is a system of discount and everything, and it's uh, very very difficult for the the, the manufacturers. And I think that uh, the accent is moving to to sales on internet. Uh, it's very, very difficult for our company to have big presence uh, in standard retails because you have a huge listings fee uh, that we are not able to, to afford. We are present only in the chains where uh, we didn't have to pay to be there. And uh, internet will should allow us, uh, we were really focusing from this open uh, to, to be on internet directly. Uh, it gives uh, a more interesting margin to the manufacturers. It gives us the possibility to have more direct contact with the final consumers to talk of the difference of our product. And I believe that uh, within three, four years, the maybe faster, uh, the share of the market for the retailer will get uh, smaller. And uh, it will be a great, great opportunity for manufacturers that want to make good product because uh, last uh, 10 years, uh, standard retailers are making so much pressure on manufacturers to make the product cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. And uh, yeah, I think it's a very, very good tendency to develop the, uh, the internet sales. Uh, it needs some investment too, but it's more interesting investment for the manufacturers because you see directly uh, the, the results of, uh, of your investment. Uh, one of the big problems of our company is that uh, we're working uh, without working capitals. Uh, the, the product is, um, we're receiving money from sales and we are reinvesting it directly in the, uh, the ingredients. Uh, last year, we had only 23% of the uh, inquiry uh, that we delivered not because we're not able to produce, but uh, we didn't have the working capitals to buy in time the ingredients. Uh, we would be able to, to sell 10 times more and probably much more if we would have a possibility of uh, listing. Uh, if you're thinking about investors, actually, um, I believe in my company. Yeah, Everything I uh, earned uh, in 15 years as employee in Russia and invest in, in our equipment in, uh, in that. Uh, I would prefer to have investor uh, that uh, would earn a percent on the, the, the money they put inside, but I'm open to, to any, uh, any talks if people want to go to inequity. But uh, the, the business of chocolate is very specific because uh, the most premium it is, the, the shortest is the, uh, the product life. Yeah, if I come in Russia in 98 and I begin to uh, drink kefir domikvdirevni, I'm still eating it and I'm not changing the, the brand. But you can go to your friends, to your relatives, uh, 25 years with the same brand of wine and chocolate. It's look uh, a little bit strange. Uh, Korkunov started the company in 99. He sold uh, in 2006 with 10,000 tons of sales. And now in 2028, and one is uh, 350 tons. So standard development for a premium chocolate company, except Ferrero and Lindt, is uh, to reinvest everything you are doing to have the fastest grow as possible, uh, expanding geographically, uh, getting big turnover, and uh, selling the company for usually three and a half times the, 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 the turnover of the company. Usually it's a five year cycles. Uh, it's something uh, I, we made uh, with Kokunov. After that, uh, Wimbledon was sailed. Uh, it's not exactly the same profile. We made uh, a little bit the inverse with KDV. KDV bought a lot of company. Uh, personally, I'm a very romantic person. Uh, the company is uh, with my family name. 
I would like uh, my two sons to, to take it in 20 years from now. But if I look at the 8,000 brand bought by Nestle since uh, 1945, uh, I doubt that my company will be so attractive in 20 years from now. I, I would like it too. Uh, if you are saying that uh, you are able to invest uh, two billions, then I say, okay, we can do it and we can repeat Ferrero history. But uh, when you are reaching some some levels of sales, it's uh, it's very it's becoming very very difficult to to compete with the mass market brand. So the the models of business I believe for my company maybe I can avoid that. But the the, the model of business I believe for my company is a, a five years development. Uh, for after that probably being sold to one of the multinational company. And uh, I like chocolate. I don't see myself doing something else. Uh, but uh, if it goes that way, eventually after that, I, I repeat it some, somewhere else. But uh, I think that it's a product that needs to be renewed all the time. Uh, you need to have at least uh, half of uh, your product rene renewed each year. And uh, it need, you need to be active. You cannot just to say, okay, I develop a nice product and I'm selling it for 20 years. It's not such an easy business. It's quite specific business. If you are interested, we can talk about that uh, separately too. I'm uh, relatively often in Moscow. Yeah, Dave, uh, Dave, I'm gonna, Dave, I'm gonna stop you there. Both, yeah. both you and Rami can get together and talk about this if you want to in the future. Your comments are, are, are very interesting listening to what, how you feel the market is and how you answer his question as far as you wanting to get out there on the internet. So those are very interesting things for many of us, but I suggest you and Rami maybe get together in the future. Rami, you can follow on with, uh, with Randall or whoever to get to contact and get in touch with Dave. So that'd be a good idea. Natalia has been waiting very, very patiently over here in the corner of my screen. Natalia, you have your hand up. You want to ask a question, dear. Uh, very inspiring, amazing story. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. Wish you all the best uh, in uh, all your endeavors. Um, I live in Canada at the moment. Uh, how can I uh, buy your product? Do you have a distributor in the United States or Canada? I, I lost the sound. I don't hear you. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, can. yeah I hear you now, yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Uh, my question is, um, uh, can we buy your product in Canada? Uh, actually, uh, no. I think it's very difficult uh, because of the logistic and the special conditions for, for transport. But as I told you, uh, I got agreement this week uh, with my first uh, employer, Andrei Korkunov, that is actually living in California. And uh, we have to ship uh, within five weeks uh, the first containers of truffles to uh, to USA, and uh, it will be available so after that through Amazon in North America. So uh, when it will uh, happen, uh, I can uh, sell um, send a message to to Randall, and you can inform everybody. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Everything the best to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Natalia, you're going to have to take a ship a trip for shopping across the border, and uh, when it's in the United States, you can pick it up in the United States and bring it back to Canada. Uh, well, I uh, I probably will go to St. Petersburg and try it there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's my great. plan for next September. <laughs> Very good. You're always welcome to come. We'd be happy to see you here, and uh, I'm sure we're going to be able to get, get it here also. Okay, are there any other questions on the screen? Anybody else have a question for David? No other questions? Oh, yeah, one got back, back in the room over there, Randall, in your room, you got, got a young man back there who would like to ask a question. Go ahead. Thank you. It's not a question. I, I just like to mention that we're going to visit Leningrad in the beginning of October. So, David, if, if you'd like, you, you're welcome to join us. We are organized uh, October Fest there, uh, together with Governor, the Ambassador of Germany, etc. So it would be a great possibility to meet in person and if you'd like, I can send you further information about it. Yeah, we, we talk about that with uh, Randall. Uh, I think it's a good idea and uh, Randall told, sent me some information about the, the Rotary Club too. 
uh, actually, uh, summer is the low seasons for the sales, but the, it's the very, very hot seasons for, for development. So uh, I was a little bit buzzy for the last uh, couple of weeks, but uh, I would like to visit your club in, in Kalingad. I would like to invite each of you uh, to uh, to Kalingad too. I'll, send, I'll show a small photography of our... Um, uh, I wanted to show the our one second our factory. I am I don't see it on the the screen now. Uh, yeah, but uh, if any of you are coming to Kalingad, I would be happy to to invite you. Uh, when Natalia asked about uh, delivery, when we are shipping within uh, Russia, we are making our shipping bag uh, ourselves. And it's a uh, thermos. So inside you have a uh, 10 millimeters uh, special layer uh, with a roof to, to keep the product cold. And uh, I think uh, for, for many, many products, you don't need chemicals to make it uh, to reach the goals. It's a lot of uh, technology for packaging, for producing, for money manufacturing, but not. Uh, no needs to to use uh, chemicals as many many producers are doing when usually they don't even need uh, so yeah. okay i i think i think that randall has uh, got his sheet pad full of um, contacts where he's supposed to connect dave you and about three other people so uh if he'll pass out that information that'll be great but uh, i think randall's going to start charging us a fee for his services because uh He's doing an awful lot of that. Go ahead, Randall, for a moment. Keep it short, please. I just want to clarify, Dave, that Boris is representing the German Chamber of Commerce, not the Rotary Club in Kaliningrad. So when he comes to Kaliningrad, he'll be with the, the ambassador. Yeah. With, with, the, with the German ambassador. So I, I think Germans like to eat chocolate too. So that might be a good opportunity for you to connect with him. Around uh, I was in uh, Cologne uh, in 2019 in January, just before the, the COVID uh, wave. And uh, we had uh, four very, very good contacts with Russian, uh, with, with German importers. They were supposed to come in, uh, in Kaliningrad in May. Uh, everything is jammed now, but uh, I believe uh, we definitely have something to propose interesting for, for the German market too. Okay. Yeah, could be could be very interesting, Dave, because as you know, here on the screen, if you, you were here earlier when we started, we've got several different countries represented here, many, many different people. So we never know who we're going to run into into this. For all of us, I'd like for all of us to give Dave a round of applause. Thank you very much, David, for your input. Very, very, very good. We enjoyed it. Uh, it's something different for us because often we get to hear a lot of projects about how people are cooperating between Russia and other countries and so forth. And it's interesting to hear another entrepreneur. We had one on earlier, uh, I believe it was either last fall or early this year, about watches, a watch manufacturer in Russia making watches there. And it was very, very interesting. So it's very good to hear from somebody who has an initiative, uh, a drive, a desire to go out there and do something a little bit different, make a product a little bit higher quality, make the product a little bit better tasting, make it, make it so that it's more appealing. The price tag may be a little bit higher, but the results are very, very good. So we appreciate your efforts and uh, we all wish you a lot of luck in going forward with what you're doing and we will stay in contact with you. Um, we have some other comments. Oh, I, the sound. I have some other comments I'm gonna be making here in a minute. Before I get to a few other things that I have here, um, Robert Morrow, Bob, has asked a question and I'm gonna let him ask. I, it may be interested to all of you. I'll keep it relatively short, my answer, but uh, I wanna uh, try to answer Bob's question for him. Bob, go ahead. I, I've, uh, I've probably not seen you so concerned about uh, COVID before, Michael, and so I'm feeling that it's a very serious situation in Florida, as you mentioned, and I was wondering if you had any ideas about whether this was uh, uh, affecting people uh, badly uh, in terms of uh, separating the ones who are vaccinated or the ones who are not vaccinated. Um, and what's and what's the influence on on the hospitals in Florida? Are they 
Are they being overrun by patients uh, who, uh, who are unvaccinated? And are, they, um, are, um, are the people who are getting it, who are in the numbers, are the ones who are vaccinated getting it, but not getting it as badly? Okay. Yeah, no, I'll answer your question. I'll answer your questions quickly. Uh, I, I watch the news here every day, uh, not all day, but, but every day just to get an update. We have more cases right now of people testing positive than we've ever had before. The pan has never been higher in, the, uh, in Florida. The hospitals, the two hospitals close to me, are maxed out. They are taking zero, no more people. They have started doubling up the rooms. They're putting two beds in one bedroom rooms. Where there used to be one hospital bed, they're putting two because they are overmaxed. They are maxed out. No more room for anybody. 86% um, of the people who are testing positive have not been vaccinated. So it's a high, high number of people who have not been vaccinated. There is a number, I don't remember, it's something like 13 or 14 percent of their patients have been vaccinated, but getting it anyway, but not so severe as you mentioned. The uh, governor of the state is an idiot. He's, he did not mandate masks for children going back to school in September. Uh, now he is um, being sued by the school, sued by the parents, and, and he's under a hell of a lot of pressure because he said you didn't have to wear a mask when you went back to school. And in the first day in the state of Florida, they had 506 children test positive after the first day of school from not wearing masks. And he said, you don't need to wear a mask. So it's very, very severe down here in Florida. We're not the only state. Texas is being inundated with this also. Um, also, Arkansas and Missouri are two more states that are very, very high on the numbers. So uh, I, I'm, I've got my shots. My family got, my, got their shots. We're OK. But um, you got to be very, very careful. And I suggest we look out for each other. I know that um, Sam earlier was online with us here and he had to drop off to go to another meeting and he agreed with my comments. He sent me a message in the chat. He said that we as Rotarians have a responsibility to try to help and check on as many people as we can. Check on your neighbor, check on your other fellow Rotarians, check on your friends and see who needs help. Not only physically help, but maybe moral help, I meant, excuse me, mental help. Maybe they need to talk to somebody. Maybe they need to get something off their shoulders about being locked down and so forth. We have responsibility to help our neighbors and our friends and help our Rotarians. But here in Florida, it's very, very bad. So I don't know. Um, I, I, you, if you've been coming here, Bob, for a while now, for the last six months to a year, I've been saying it's going to be spring 2022 before things get better. That's my opinion. Just from what I've been reading and what I've been listening to the doctors and everyone, springtime 2022, maybe things might get better. Until then, it's going to get worse. At least that's the way it is here in the United States and in Florida. So we're, you, most of you are around the world somewhere other than Florida. I don't think I see anybody on the screen in the United States except for um, Robert or Bob. But uh, I don't know what it's like in your place. But it's not being handled well here and getting worse. So... Trying to be trying to stay safe, trying to stay uh, away from folks, and trying to convince people to do what they need to do. That's right. So that's to answer your question, Bob. I Keep don't safe. Where you, Bob, where you at? You you on the West Coast or where are you at? No, I'm in Ontario near Toronto. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. I don't anyways, know. Keep, keep, thank you. Keep safe. I will. I will. But it's it's turning turning bad here. So. But we'll be all right. I mean, I'll be all right. And I'm talking to other people. We're trying to take care of them. So do our best. Okay. I know that's a tough subject for everybody. Um, we skipped something earlier. And I don't like skipping things. We're not supposed to do that. Skipping is not good for us. Um, we did not do our four-way test. And I've been told my four-way test is not correct. But I'm going to use it anyway. Um, let me get my screen here. My screen's not quite right. Uh, just my screen. All right. We're in the four-way test. I'm going to ask everybody, please turn on your microphone. And as I turn on the microphone, I will read the four-way test. And if you will repeat it after I do, I'd like to go through this. This is the tradition that we have in our meeting that we've been doing now for almost two years. So I'd like to stick with it and continue. The first of our four-way tests is, is it the truth? Is it the is truth? It the truth? 
Is it fair to all concerned? Is it, is it fair, fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it build goodwill, will it build goodwill, and, goodwill, goodwill and, better and better friendship? friendship? <clears throat> will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial, beneficial to all, all concerned? And as I did a couple of weeks ago, I added the fifth one. Is it fun? Is it fun? Is it, is it fun? <laughs> but it needs to be fun. If it's not fun, we shouldn't be doing it. And uh, we need to make sure that we're we're getting that through. We had our speaker tonight. Let me get to my other program here. And you all know that our project that we have, our main project, our signature project for our club, is the Children's Rehabilitation Center. And we have had several children there. And now we're working on our fifth child still. We haven't completed that. I'm hoping that when Andres Bone gets back off his vacation, we will finish that. But I want you all to remember that every single child deserves to walk, run, and play, just like all of the other children. Just think of yourself when you were small, if you had to sit in a wheelchair or sit in your house and look out the window while the other children are running around and jumping and playing, how terrible that would be. These children deserve to be able to walk and move around. They have cerebral palsy. They can get help, but we need your donations. And I know many of you on the screen have already donated. So thank you for your donations to the people who have. Thank you very, very much because it's very important to these children. We will continue to pursue this. We wanted to help another child walk for the first time. This is our objectives. What's what we'd like to do. And in order to do that, we need a project to, to help our community and reach out to other members so that these little people can get up and walk again like other children. So this is our signature project. It will remain our signature project for a while. We don't plan on changing it and we need your help. These are some places where you can contact to see videos about it. We often show those videos during our meetings. I'm not gonna do that today. We also, you can contact Randall at eastmanrotary.ru or Mr. Andres Bone who is our treasurer. Andres is the key person to contact the uh, CRC or the Children's Rehabilitation Center. And he's the one who lines up the children after we make a payment and so forth. We don't put partial payment in. We wait until we have the full amount. It's about 2,500 euro for one child. So far we have done four and we're almost ready to do the fifth one. So we're right on the edge and hopefully by next month we'll be in our sixth one. So. Uh, things are going in the right direction. We have a goal of 10 this year, so we hope to reach that level of 10 this year. This is just from donations that people are making. This is not with a global grant. This is not with any extra large project. This is simply inputs from people. So we appreciate your efforts and we appreciate you being part of it. Our speaker's schedule coming up. May I say something? Go right um, ahead. Uh, regarding um, the rehabilitation center, uh, there is uh, some um, donorship on the way from Germany, but there is a problem with the contract. So uh, there are new requirements and you have to have a, a close look on the contract uh, between the donor and um, the center. So uh, this is something you have to have in mind, but I think we could solve it. Okay, yeah, we'll get, we'll get Andres on that when he gets back from his vacation. He's currently on vacation now, but as treasurer and as a project manager for this particular project, we'll get him on that. There is a way, and we have had some people, um, Gabriella, who donate directly to the center without going through us whatsoever, and that's okay too. We don't mind that as long as we know that it went through. All we're worried about is getting the children the service they need so the children can walk. It's not about us saying how much money we can raise. We're trying to help the children. So if someone can go, if, if um, it can be done straight from the person or the organization to the hospital and get, get the paperwork done that way, that's fine with us. We don't mind. We just like to know about it. So thank you very much, Gabriella, for that information. We'll get Andres on that when he gets back from his vacation. Okay, speaker lineup. We just had the top three already here. We had Minaj, then we had no meeting, then we had David. We got yours, Halter, coming up next. He's going to be talking about the United Kingdom and Russia ICC. Um, we have had other ICCs already on here from the Netherlands and Canada and the US um, and German. So we're, we want to make sure that we get to see that on the 1st of September. 
it should be very, very interesting to hear what, in, what the UK is doing to try and work with their people in Russia. The person- Michael, said, Michael, Maurice is not speaking on the 8th of September because that's his wedding anniversary. Who, for Boris? Yes, so we have another, we have another no, person. Yeah, 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 yeah. You tell Bo Boris, Boris, here's what I want you, Boris, here's what I want you to do. You tell your wife that you are going to speak on the 8th of September. And after she does that, you are going to fly her to Monaco for a one week vacation with you and her. So you'll take her to a vacation to celebrate your anniversary one week later, but on the 8th, you'll be there to speak, okay? It's a great idea, but we still have to postpone it until October. Okay, okay, uh, all right. I no problem, Boris. Boris, I know you wouldn't, I know you I wouldn't know. do it unless there was a good, I know you wouldn't do it unless there was a good reason, Boris, so no problem, we understand. We'll work with you. Boris, Boris has something to say to Gabriella. Gabriella, if you have some further question about the contract, the nation contract, you, you can just uh, ask me. We, we just did it here in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. And I think I could help. Uh, I hope, at least. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think now we could settle this. Uh, and uh, Jens Kroschneider from uh, Moscow, Metropole Russia um, Club, he is helping. He has a lot of experiences as well. And uh, the problem is that uh, Germany, our club, for example, is ready to, uh, well, to sponsor a, a good sum, but they need a, um, a, um, a receipt, an official receipt. And this is the problem, not be, uh, between our club and uh, the center in Dusseldorf, who will transfer uh, transfer the money, but uh, between the center and the uh, the rehabilitation center, because uh, it's a question which um, law do is required in case there are some problems and so on. But um, thank you very much. I think we should uh, keep in contact to exchange our information. Sure. Thank you, Thank you, Boris, and thank you, Gabriella. We will find a way to make it happen. That's not a question. We will make it happen. It just take, may take us a little bit longer, but we'll get there. And thank both of you, Boris and Gabriella, for your comments. Um, we're going to have the Open World Program uh, from Natalia on the 15th September. Philip is going to be here to talk to us about DOT glasses. And I'm not quite, quite sure, uh, Randall, what was Sergey going to talk to us about at the end of September? Sergey is going to talk about, he's an entrepreneur who created a, a, a very interesting modular, small soundproof booth that can be placed in offices, uh, including service offices like this, so that people can talk. I forget the name exactly what it's called, but it's quite an interesting product, which he's also exporting. Okay, very, 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 very good. And, and these, we know these things may change over a period of time. Certainly, we're getting uh, 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 yours here next week on the 1st, and if, if Boris or others need to change, we will modify. Randall has been doing a very good job of balancing these and changing them and coordinating them, so hats off to you, Randall. I know it's, a, it's a, that's almost a full-time job, just taking care of all these arrangements, so thank you very, very much for that. Okay, now, I'm about ready to wrap things up. Um, we have talked about our speakers, we've talked about our project, we talked about a couple of you coordinating on trying to get more in here for our project. Let's talk to our members just briefly before we get to the end of our meeting and see what they have on the, on the plate. Mr. Kai in uh, Moscow, do you have any comments or anything you'd like to add? Oh, um, <clears throat> thank you, Michael. Uh, just hello from Moscow to everybody. and. Uh, it's a pity here in Moscow, so summer is going to end already and a few more weeks and we will have the first snow. So <laughs> it makes a bit uh, thinking how fast flies time. But uh, good to go back to the weekly rhythm. Okay, very good. Rami? Well, thank you, everything is great. Thank you for the lovely presentation and everything. Okay, and good for speaking up tonight. Don't ever hesitate like that. I mean, like you didn't hesitate tonight. Keep that up. Just if you have a question, something you're interested in, ask please. Because uh, we're all here. We're all here to try to help each other if at all, at all possible. Antonina, uh, honorary member. 
what it what it got for us. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's just very a special day for me today because um, I was for one hour in ICC, uh, Canada Russia committee, and we were experimenting today uh, for a sake of Russian speaking people, Rotarians. Oh, we changed our time for meeting. So it was 11 a.m. here in Belleville instead of 11 p.m. here in Belleville, but 7 p.m. 7 in yeah. Moscow or somewhere. Okay, so it brought to us <clears throat> interesting participants and from younger old, old, old age as well. Uh, from Russia, both uh, Russian and pretty good English speaking people. And, um, and I also, uh, I'm happy that our uh, double language uh, Facebook site is working now for mm -hmm. ICC. Uh, so we place usually information in English language and we give some kind of translation options or in the Russian language. So it's more friendly. And what, what connections were discovered during this meeting between uh, Canada and St. Petersburg and Tomsk? Uh, so it's, it's working, you know? And Good. definitely, Dave Munger, your presentation today at the club is, uh, is so, it's highlight of the day. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you, Antonia. Very good. All right. Another honorary member, Gabriella, comments? Yes. Um, I want to thank Dave. On the other hand, it really was a torture hearing so much about this uh, delicious uh, uh, chocolate <laughs> and sitting here without any. So it's better we have a meeting in presence. Yes. With chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. If, we had, if we had a meeting in presence, we would all be gobbling down David's chocolates if he brought us, or maybe yes. he would isolate us to one piece per person, maybe. I have just as a teaser, because if you tease the people with just one piece, maybe they'll go out and buy more. So we don't know. So um, Natalia, you're a regular member showing up at all our meetings. Any comments, please? Thank you very much for the very interesting presentation and uh, looking forward to September the 1st. Very good. Thank you, Natalia. You appreciate that. David, any closing comment before we close the meeting? Yeah, thank you very much that uh, Randall and everybody, uh, you Randall invite me and uh, give me the possibility to, to talk. Uh, for me, it's the first experience with the Rotary Club. I hope not the last. Very good. Uh, I, uh, I learned a little bit more here in Kaliningrad uh, last week uh, because I'm in the... Um, uh, for your club of uh, Kaliningrad, and uh, one of the person in the club is uh, in uh, the Rotary too, and uh, we're supposed to meet uh, next week. The, all the the foreigners uh, group of Kaliningrad is invited to our factory, so we'll talk. We'll have chance to talk about the Rotary Club too. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Thank you. And Randall, comment as a member. Well, Michael, uh, in about five hours, it will be midnight. And uh, 30 years ago, I got married here in St. Petersburg. So tomorrow, I'm going to have a glass of wine or two, and maybe some chocolate after with my wife. Congratulations, 30 years. Very, very good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. That's very, very nice. Uh, Boris, thank you for coming this evening and bringing a friend. So we hope to see you again um, and work out those arrangements. I still think you should tell your wife you're gonna speak and take her to Monaco. I still think that's a better idea, but we'll see how that works out. Work out your arrangements with Randall. Uh, from, from my closing comments to everybody, I'm just gonna repeat very shortly. I won't, won't belabor the thing. Take care of your friends and neighbors. Look around you and see if there's anybody who needs help. Right now, things in some places like Florida are getting worse. So please look around and help folks. Have that empathy for the person who's struggling and try and help them if you can. They're all gonna appreciate that later on in life because someone helped them. Thank you very, very much for your efforts, okay? I'm gonna officially close the meeting. 
at my usual bell of crystal, but my, my our meeting is closed. Thank you all very, very much. And we'll see all of you hopefully again on 1 September when, the, when we're gonna hear about the UK, the English, or excuse me, the England Russian ICC. Thank you all very, very much. Have a good evening. Good night. Stay healthy. Good night. Good night. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? That's the Rotary four-way test. Now many years ago, 1932, his company was headed down, he knew not what to do. Then Herbert Taylor started on a quest to keep his team from certain doom. He wrote the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all that's the Rotary four-way test. Adopted some years later by Rotarians worldwide. Some simple rules for dealing with the people by your side. A guide for life's decisions, no doubt one of the best. Just 24 quite simple words. The four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? That's the Rotary four-way test. class or on the playground with your friends at school you'll find that hurtful words and actions really aren't too cool so as you make your choices of what to do or say remember that old four-way test and you will be okay is it the truth is it fair to all concerned will it build goodwill and better friendships will it be beneficial to all concerned. That's the Rotary four-way test. And will it be beneficial to all concerned? That's the Rotary.